uh, these next 45 minutes of mistakes, catastrophes, and everything in between. We all make mistakes. From the singular, singular stupid decisions like driving a van after too, too little sleep and parking it on top of a one and a half meter high boulder, to the more insidious and slow mistakes that creep up on you month after month. Like the time when I was my first time as a, one of the main organizers of Knudepunkt in Denmark, where we weren't proactive enough in assigning, uh, assigning uh, tasks and responsibilities, which meant that slowly during the entire process I became more and more bitter, more and more angry with my co-organizers, and I ended up not participating in the organizer after party. When I started LARPing, I looked at all the older people and thought, they got it figured. <laughs> it took me a year or two, and then I had the same reaction as you just did. <laughs> and I decided they were morons, and I was going to show them how to do everything. <laughs> <clears throat> Luckily, I found a, a group of, uh, of like-minded people um, where we created a very, uh, very constructive culture and spirit of, uh, of allowing and, uh, and forgiving no mistakes. <laughs> this is a picture of one of, our, uh, one of our board meetings at the organization. <laughs> Both depicted people are still alive to this day. The day after this meeting, I'm not pictured here, I'm standing somewhere outside the frame, probably with a, with a metal golf, golf club, <laughs> trying, to, trying to destroy a police riot shield that, that a poor, poor friend of mine used to try to defend himself for dear life. <laughs> but I left the organization the day after. I was, I was standing in my shower, I was furious, my, my right eye was twitching. I can't remember the exact discussion. It was probably something very important, like somebody had forgotten to pack the van, something like that. That mentality in the, the famous word of, uh, of Marcellus Wallace is pride fucking with me. That organization is, uh, is now called the uh, Rollespilsfabrikken. Uh, and is one of the largest uh, role-playing organizations in Denmark. <laughs> Maybe the people making mistakes that I tried to kill with the golf club were more constructive and were a more positive asset to the organization than I was at the time. <laughs> the longer you do something, the more time you have to fuck up. Please welcome a group of speakers that have chosen to share their mistakes, catastrophes they have made for themselves, holes they have digged for themselves and then tripped into. Hopefully, we'll learn something from them. Probably, we'll be entertained. But please be nice, because all mistakes start, starts out being, being pretty shameful, and it's only after some time that, that bec they become good stories that you feel comfortable sharing. The first speaker of tonight is uh, C.A. Sandqvist. She's a Swedish lab organizer, mainly working within the organization called Atropos. Please welcome to the stage, C.A. Hello, guys. Well, isn't this just crash starting Knutpunkt and seeing people you know for the first time in two years? Hi. Um, yes, so uh, some of you might uh, remember the last time I talked about mistakes I've made. I will not tell you the same stories again. Sufficient to say, if you organize a LARP about the world where all women have died, you should figure out that if you are a woman, that means you can't be a part of your own LARP. So I spent three days hiding in a black box and trying to sneak out of it to get to the kitchen and cook for all the men, by the way. 
And then when they came in to do the dishes, I had to hide outside, standing pressed against the window, listening to see if they had left the kitchen so I could get back where I belonged. <laughs> but I'm going to talk about a completely different mistake today. Oops, that's a spoiler for you. Um, this year, I organized the first LARP after Corona. It was called Lord of Lies. I was super excited. I had been planning this LARP for like three years. Uh, it's basically based on a true story about a cult in the 50s that had uh, participants like Jack Parsons, Marjorie Cameron, L. Ron Hubbard, who would go on and start his own cult one day. That's Scientology for you, if you don't know. It was a great plan. Uh, I just wanted to make like a simple, nice cult LARP, and we needed to have like a plot that made people come together and do something big. And I thought, what about summoning the Antichrist, right? <laughs> That's always fun. And you should do that by impregnate a woman with Antichrist. That's cool. And then I thought, I want to portray like the gradual decay of this cult. I don't want it to be just two or three days. I want it to be like the feeling of a group of people tearing each other apart. So we will need to put a time jump in there somewhere. So we will just jump a year ahead and then we will see the final destruction of the cult. That's going to be awesome. And I go to the venue and we start the LARP and we come to the time jump. And everyone is like super emotional and happy at the first run. We're sitting there off game around the breakfast table and we're gonna workshop what happened during this year. And the woman who played the character who had been impregnated with Antichrist said, Siri, yeah. <laughs> Shouldn't I have a small baby? <laughs> <laughs> Shit. There's really no way of like keeping face in that moment. <laughs> you just have to admit that, yeah, no, I didn't think about that. I'm sorry. <laughs> no small babies hidden away anywhere. Sorry, yeah, we will have to rethink that part. And her suggestion was very helpful. Maybe we don't jump a year. Maybe we jump like eight and a half months. <laughs> Yeah, that's a really, really good idea. Let's do that instead. Great. Um, you would need a belly though, right? <laughs> yeah. So, not me, mind you. My wonderful participants went to work using their workshop time to build a pregnant belly for the LARP about making a woman pregnant that I had designed. <laughs> It looked pretty good. <laughs> as far as I know, and I don't know exactly because I was busy cooking lunch because that's what I do when I organize LARPs. They stuffed a lot of like different pieces of clothing that they borrowed from all the other participants into like a pair of stockings and then they sort of shaped it up and then filled up with socks on the top to make it the right shape. <laughs> At the second round, uh, I had already, you know, uh, gone through it once. Uh, I still didn't have a small baby or a pregnancy belly because there was just one day in between runs. But then they decided to just have a miscarriage instead. So that was very helpful, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I think that if I ever run it again, which I probably will, I will probably have a pregnancy belly with me. I feel like that is the lesson to learn here, that if you organize a LARP where the main plot is to impregnate a woman, please think about the fact that the woman might end up pregnant. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Siri. The next speaker is an uh, enthusiastic Danish LARP maker called Andreas Jensen, but if you know him, you know him as ESO. Please welcome Andreas. Hello, as Troels just said, my name is Andreas and uh, most people call me ESO. 
I've been laughing for almost 25 years, and I've been organizing campaigns and one-shots, helping out at major labs in Denmark and stuff like that. In 2015, right after the Danish uh, Knudepunkt, I started to work on my big vision of a summer lab in Denmark for one entire week, fantasy, epic, amazing. And I enlisted two of my best friends to help me do it because that's what you do with your friends. And we thought everything was going great. We launched the game uh, for participants a year after a summer without any fantasy labs in Denmark, which is practically unheard of. So we thought all the players really want one fantasy lab. Of course, there was like six other labs that year. We did almost no PR because everybody was so excited for our idea. Everywhere we went, people were like, oh, this is the lab I've been waiting for. I'll get all my friends to come. Don't worry, we'll be at least 20 people on my team. And we were like, amazing. It's so easy, this, this uh, thing. We, we were uh, hoping to get 100, 150 participants. We had made ourselves uh, promise to ourselves that if there was 300 participants, we would close the um, um, sign-ups. Uh, and we only needed 75 to make it all run. We got... 38. Oh. <laughs> um, a lot of people were, oh, it didn't really fit in our schedule anyway. We didn't, oh, we thought it was a different concept. Oh, yeah, oh, a lot of excuses. We had to cancel the lab, of course. We had to put it on ice. We still have all the material. We all have a fever dream of launching it one day, but as life goes on, so uh, does everything else. I got promoted, have no more time. One of my friends got a baby. She is a mom, doesn't have the time. And the last guy, he got a lot of stress. So right now we have a lab with no participants because we were so sure everything was fine because people told us it was great and we didn't listen to people outside our inner circle. Please. Don't do that mistake. <laughs> Our next speaker is at uh, Knudepunkt for the first time. Luca Nord Jensen has a superpower. It's being passion fueled and that will make a, make a lot of sense in a few minutes. Please welcome Luca. God, there's many people here. Um, this has been a, a day full of uh, a lot of uh, input for both me and you guys. So I would love to start my talk by asking you guys to take a deep breath with me. Thank you. So, my name is uh, Luca. I'm 18 years old. Um, I started uh, making uh, labs and being a GM for two years ago. Two years ago. Um, and my first ever lab, I was like, this has to be big. <laughs> it needs to be big. Either I go big or I go home. <laughs> so, I so I started um, making this lab. And I was like, there's going to be zombies, guns, and loot. <laughs> what more do I need? And then I talked to my friends and were like, do you need more than zombies, guns, and loot? And they nod and were like, yes. And then I tried to figure out what does it actually take to do a lab. Um, luckily for me, uh, I got the chance to uh, arrange this lab at my boarding school. So I, did, I didn't at all have to think about uh, food or toilets and cleaning and stuff. Um, yeah, so that was nice. Um, the lab I made 
it, we called Safe House 13, and where it was post-apocalyptic, zombies, you know all that. Um, and uh, I thought that all those big, big, epic GMs out there in Denmark, they're maybe, maybe they're like two weeks. Then they have a lot. So, so I really, I really rushed myself, guys, and you don't even understand. I thought you did it on two weeks. Then, then, then Knudpunkt is, uh, then Knudpunkt is done. <laughs> um, and I really tried, but I just kept getting stuck on problems I didn't know how to solve. Uh, for example, how the fuck do I write a plot? <laughs> Uh, <laughs> uh, so it, it took me one and a half years to, uh, to scratch this lab together. Um, and I thought, I'll, I'll make a lot of PR on my boarding school, and then I can, not more than 40 people. Not more, then it's big, then it's big. <laughs> yeah, I was really proud of myself. Uh, I haven't got the players yet, I just, I just told myself. Um, then I did a lot of PR and a lot of workshopping and uh, hyping at my boarding school, uh, and it worked. I got 40 people, and I was, I was so happy, you guys. Uh, then uh, a week, maybe two weeks, not more, uh, before I had to arrange the lab, and it like, you know, took off, um, there was another boarding school. And I got told, oh, they're coming on the day that uh, you're holding your lab. Uh, can, can they also participate? <laughs> and I was, I was proud. Yeah. Yeah, I, yeah. There's no difference between uh, 40 and, uh, I don't know, another boarding school extra participating. Um, so, of course, I said yes. Of course I could do that, right? I don't need help. Um, then I, um, then I said, I said, yeah, of course, just uh, send, me, uh, send me the number of extra players. Um, and then uh, they sent the mail. Yeah. And then I had a heart attack. No. <laughs> um, I went from 40 to 100 players. Um, and then two days after, uh, I got a mail uh, extra saying, uh, oh, uh, we have all these extra people who uh, didn't get to, to write their name on the first list. <laughs> um, and I was like, I can't, I can't have more players, you guys. Um, and then, uh, so uh, sweet and uh, sweet and sweet as they are, uh, they said, uh, we can just be NPCs. <laughs> Uh, so then I went from uh, 15 NPCs to uh, 45 NPCs. <laughs> um, yeah, so... Uh, and uh, then I suddenly realized I have seven days <laughs> to finish this lab and do all the preparation and set up the location for almost 150 people. <laughs> and then I, uh, then I began. Uh, I, <laughs> um, I, I have planned that uh, you should have these uh, cards that should uh, give, you allowed, uh, give you permission to get your food, and there should be these loot bags hidden around. Um, but instead of packing a 20 loot package, I maybe, I think I packed like 100. Yeah. Uh, and it takes a lot of time, you guys. Uh, you, you don't understand, but I could do it, right? Um, I was very confident, of course, I could do it by myself. I don't need no help. Um, because I wanted, I wanted to be like the big guys. You guys. You don't, you don't ever get help. <laughs> I'm sure of it. So, um... Skipping uh, forward about uh, 14 hours and a whole lot of fucking stress, um, the NPCs arrived, and uh, the NPCs I had originally, they were briefed. 
I've uh, talked on the phone with them a lot in the, in the week before and stuff. So uh, that's fine, right? Uh, then I forgot about the 30 extra NPCs. Uh, and then I panic, uh, write a uh, page, uh, which basically said, uh, don't be a dick, uh, be a zombie, say rah. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't know what to say, you guys. <laughs> I'm still shocked. Um, a lot of chaos happened. Um, skipping forward to uh, the cleaning part. Uh, <laughs> uh, where I, I asked the players and were like, oh, are you, are you, are you fresh for helping cleaning up tomorrow? And they were like, yeah, of course. <laughs> then uh, we came to tomorrow and uh, nobody showed up. <laughs> it was me and my NPCs just going around cleaning. Um, yeah, I don't know what to say. I'm still disappointed in them. Bad, bad players. <laughs> um, but uh, the big bummer, he comes here. Uh, when we finished cleaning, and I uh, got a little bit of food, not that much because I fell asleep uh, while eating, um, I got in my bed and I slept for 16 hours. Then I woke up, ate a bit again, and went to bed again. Um, so that I could say a whole lot of things about what I've learned uh, from, uh, from this. Uh, but I think the most important thing is, uh, don't be so fucking proud, man. Yeah. Ask for help. Thank you, Luca. I'm sure that we'll see each other again where you have made a lot of exciting new mistakes. <laughs> the next speaker is a, is a Finnish, uh, Finnish lab maker. She's active in the Chimera Art Collective, and I've promised her to, uh, to say that the story she will tell is not from her time in the Chimera Art Collective. <laughs> Please welcome Tonja Goldblatt. Hello? Okay, yeah. So, um, I'm going to talk about uh, a vintage mistake from 24 years ago. <laughs> this, <laughs> this is uh, sort of like how not to design um, a major LARP plot twist if you don't want your players to starve. <laughs> <laughs> or how to accidentally save your players from food poisoning by bad design. And um, here we can see um, <laughs> this picture is actually not from the LARP in question. <laughs> There's not a lot of pictures from that time. This is uh, 1997, and uh, this is not from my first LARP, but the second one we made three months later because we did not let our mistakes stop us, <laughs> which is a good thing. Uh, I'm the one uh, on the left in the red cape. So yeah, um, this is 1997 in Joensuu, which is a small town in East Finland. I'm from there originally. Uh, it's near the Russian border. And uh, we're making our first LARP there. Uh, it was a fantasy LARP and uh, it was awesome. And we'd written all the materials and the characters and the plots and then we cast our players as the characters and we do this um, according to what we think about the players. So, <laughs> so the shy guy gets to play the celibate monk because he doesn't talk to girls and the loud boy plays the fighter and the socially awkward girl plays the boring sister because she's perfect for the role. <laughs> Yes, I'm sorry. <laughs> this hurts. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, um, 
this was how it was done. And to alleviate this point, uh, in this LARP, we actually had four players from Helsinki who came all over, all, all the way to Joensu, and clearly they must be elitist bastards <laughs> who look down on us because they are from Helsinki, from the capital city. So we, of course, cast them as four bored nobles four elitist bastards from the capital city <laughs> who looked down on the peasants. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so back to the LARP. Um, so we're arranging this LARP and it's going perfectly. And um, we lost half our venue right before the LARP because the summer cottage that was supposed to be our tavern burnt down. <laughs> Un unrelated to us, okay? <laughs> But we, had, we still had the sauna building and some army tents, so we didn't let that stop us either. Uh, it was summer. It was a hot summer that year, June. Uh, and then comes the day of the LARP. And this is uh, June 7th. Uh, the 8th is my birthday. I was turning 20. And uh, the previous night of the LARP, me and my then boyfriend, who was not part of the organizers, but was uh, a player in the LARP, we make mincemeat stew for the LARP because a fantasy, <laughs> fantasy LARP has to have a tavern and the tavern has to have a meat stew. <laughs> <laughs> yep, now, now we get to the food point. Um, so we make this minced meat soup and we put it in two buckets. These <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so white buckets with white lids, and we put them into the cellar overnight. And in the morning, we take them out, and we take it to the venue, which is just a campfire because the house has burned, and we leave it out in the sun <laughs> for all day. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, bear with me. <laughs> so yeah, this, this was a fantasy LARP. Uh, <laughs> This was a fantasy LARP, a usual 90s LARP where uh, everybody has their own backstory, not connected to anything. And then there's the... <laughs> yeah, they're, they're just gathered at the tavern. <laughs> or the campfire, because the house has burned. <laughs> and then there's the major, main plot. And the main plot, the big plot of this LARP was that the tavern lady, who everybody loved, was missing. And there was just a hooded stranger there instead, standing there, making meat soup. <laughs> I see you might guess where this is going. <laughs> yeah. So, so this great plot twist was supposed to be revealed at dinner time. And this was supposed to happen so that the old farmer character would find uh, the ring that he had once given to the tavern lady in his soup, in his plate, and realize things. But in, <laughs> in order to avoid spoilers, we had not told the player of the old farmer that he had given a ring to the tavern lady. <laughs> So, so you, you see the problem. The poor player had no idea that she, he, he should recognize the ring, and no way to, he could recognize the ring, because we hadn't told him. So after a brief, very clumsy and off-gamey period, we managed to get the plot twist through that, uh, oh my god, that soup is actually the tavern lady. Who knew? A and the stranger, he, he's the murderer. Go get him! And, he, and he, was, he was chased away with both her swords. And this was very nice. Uh, everybody has a big chase scene and comes back to the campfire. And uh, we continue the LARP. And it was dinner time. <laughs> <laughs> For some reason, we had not foreseen at all <clears throat> this design flaw, which is obvious if you look at it any closer. <laughs> like we hadn't realized that if you in-game serve your players, your character's soup and say it's human meat, they don't want to eat it. <laughs> so um, 
they didn't. In, instead, they very much in game, very, uh, very, very seriously. Oh, sorry, very seriously poured it all out. <laughs> and um, <laughs> suddenly, we had no dinner. <laughs> Which, of course, might have been a very good thing because, as we remember, it was a hot summer day, <laughs> and the soup had gone slightly greenish, slightly stinking, and I don't think serving that to people would have been a good idea, so we didn't have dinner. Except that we had, of course, the vegetarian option. <laughs> we, we might have had maybe three vegetarians at the LARP and no idea what we're doing, so we had a, a vegetarian option for those who don't eat meat, and our vegetarian option was oatmeal porridge with no <laughs> nothing on the side. <laughs> So l luckily, people had snacks, but but yeah. So 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 that was the first LARP I was organizing, and the moral of the story is: um, do not leave your soup out in the heat in the summer. But if you do, make sure to also dis disable your dinner by LARP plot, <laughs> and always have a vegetarian option. Thank you. Thank you, Tonya. Our next speaker has a longer lab designing career than most of us. Put together. Put together. <laughs> Sorry. That, of course, means more time to make mistakes. Please welcome Margo. academic approach <laughs> and of course there were too many puns I couldn't uh, you know origin of the thesis uh, thesis on thesis I have more I'm here all night <laughs> so uh, this is the yeah. Bristol stool ch chart it's genuine look it up on v Wikipedia uh, it actually says it's hilarious. It says it's um, used for clinical and experimental <laughs> fields. <laughs> we'll uh, go enter the exper experimental fields right now. So I think the problem is, do your, it's like in the movies, do your character poop? I don't know, does it? And if it does, how does it poop? Does he poop on porcelain, like proper uh, upper scale rolls, or is it a hole in the ground? So a hole in the ground, we, we've been there, it, it actually kind of works. The trouble is when you go to the porcelain, when you want porcelain, but you have this. <laughs> so I'll start out uh, way back, 1994. Eric said, I know some of you recognize this. I get, oh, I can get some porta potties from the army. Great news. Uh, I was upper class, I had uh, the long dresses, and uh, I brought a toilet with me. <laughs> Who knew that the Norwegian army takes a dump in banana cases. <laughs> I had no idea. Also, it started raining. <laughs> I'm just gonna leave it at that. It's a sordid story, literally. <laughs> um, we move on to 1944, which was in 1998. So, the idea here was that People didn't empty buckets in uh, 1944. We can subject the players to this because we subject the roles to this. And so we need to build something. This is not the actual thing. This is what we wanted it to be. 
And then Norwegian winter happened. <laughs> so it was the coldest, most miserable place on the entire LARP. It was kind of a, a wooden thing over this <laughs> with cloth around it, no roof, and <laughs> remind you of the snow. So we'll go forward to 1942 uh, in 2000. So this is, uh, we uh, filed a uh, application to dig a hole because this is a bird sanctuary. Yeah. Uh, can you spell Freedom of Information Act? And it was summer, you know, newspapers had nothing better to do than to look into what kind of applications come around. So we had the following, well, we, the Society of Living History, filed an application for digging a temporary toilet. That was the actual application. It became in the papers. I don't have it, I didn't find it at, uh, right now. The Religious Society of Living Word has applied to install a wastewater facility in the bird sanctuary. <laughs> If they're an oppressor, I don't want to talk to you. <laughs> so, Stranger Dreams. Um, if you've been to Roskilde, you'll know what this means. Um, so it's when you sort of had to dig a little to be able to take a dump. But enter Norwegian winter. <laughs> so, like a pickaxe and Tons of work to be able to take a dump. A lot of work. Once upon a time, 2005. Um, oh, prop. <laughs> Did you know that these come in two types? This is a solid kind of type where you can take a dump and, and you can fill it, and that's okay. Well, there was one that wasn't. <laughs> And I said to uh, the guy who was doing it, so I, it, unlike Siri, I don't work in the kitchen. I work at the other end <laughs> when I organize. And I said to him, what is that water under the bag? No. Oh yeah. Oh, that was horrible. And also, the bags we actually were, we, we were gonna empty we were gonna empty in like a similar kind of place. And if you don't realize that when you empty the bag, there's water down there and it hits the water, oh. all your clothes ends like, end like this. <laughs> Two minutes more. Um, 1942. Uh, in 2017, this is uh, the sewer, very touchy sewer, and pumps, based on pumps. Uh, the hero. <laughs> yeah! I promised him one champagne every time he went down the sewer to fix things. I owe him more than one, uh, one case. And we lost total power. And at that point, uh, I mean, the whole area lost power. We needed to uh, make a makeshift uh, toilet. So, uh, but since it was partly uh, a military arp, we had a sentry box. So never mind the silly person standing in front of the sentry box. <laughs> we did uh, make a toilet. We turned the sentry box so it was facing, and uh, Frida here. Uh, Room in the sentry box. Yeah, in the total nutty, she had this view while taking it up. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay. So, that was, uh, <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much, Marco. Our final speaker is Jørn Slimdal. He has promised only to tell a small selection of his many mistakes. Please welcome Jørn.
Hello, everyone. I will try to keep this short and sweet, which is my strength. <laughs> this is not a story of uh, my personal style choices at the time. I tried to go old school, then Margot Antonia knocked me out of the water. But this is a picture from the happy-go-lucky fantasy LARP we made about an Arab-inspired culture having a prison camp. Oh. And this isn't even the mistake. <laughs> it's, it, it is. <laughs> it's, it's a mistake, but it's not so bad. So, uh, so the general design here was uh, to get 100 people, which, look, I can tell you, in Norway, that's a lot of people, uh, to come to the same place and fight. Um, so at the end, we have uh, a bunch of 16-year-olds with buffer swords uh, who the entire LARP wants to hurt. And this is something in common with something else. We'll get back to, uh, to the big payoff because I'm doing this short and sweet now. We had 20 stormtroopers. Yay! I, I didn't make a single thing. That's the only thing that was good about uh, a long-awaited agreement. A Star Wars LARP, which had 20 stormtroopers. All the practicalities were to be sold by, let's take a couple of planks and build something. <laughs> we didn't have planks, we didn't have hammers, nails, tape, we didn't have tape. It was a journey. Um, we used the uh, sign-up money to buy booze for the players. It turns out some players thought that was weird. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, we... Uh, this was back in the day. But if you look at the person on the picture, that is Suniva Saksvik. Uh, she's the brother of Gudmun Saksvik, who made the Stormtroopers. They are the only people who should have proper credit for this entire venture. Because what she did uh, was to cook Star Wars food. That's what we wanted to do, make proper cool Star Wars food. So she spent an entire day making blue milk, small confectionery snails that were edible but looked really weird and sewing together stakes to make a giant snake. <laughs> but you'll have to take my word for it. Uh, yeah. I love you, Greta, but you didn't see it, did you? Because that's the thing no one did. Because not only did we not document it, but like when we sent the 16-year-olds into this fray of 100 people with plate armor and swords, we didn't really have lights. <laughs> So we spent a lot of time managing to get people fed. They could go to the bathroom. We had players and sign-ups. We even had help. And in the end, the payoff was lots of people sitting in a tent in pitch darkness being told by me, isn't this exotic? <laughs> so there's more incredibly uh, humiliating details that you're free to hit me up on, but we're uh, well out of time. Uh, so yeah, everyone else had a moral, but I guess it's good if LARPers can see stuff. <laughs> Please give an extra round of applause for all the amazing speakers. <laughs> and to summarize all the wonderful lessons we have learned today, Again, in the words of the immortal Marcellus Wallace, fuck pride. Thank you and have a nice evening.